Hello friends and welcome to another video on Raspberry Pi Audio. I've been on a quest to find the best audio devices for musicians and tech geeks that use the Raspberry Pi. And in my first Pyth synth video, I showcased this Behringer UCA202. It took quite a bit of work to function correctly with Rasby and Jesse at the time, but after many hours of messing about with Jack and the Linux kernel, I finally managed to get low latency with my MIDI keyboard. Ironically, once Raspbian Stretch was released, all my troubles with this device vanished and none of that extra work was even necessary. Overall, I'm still a very huge fan of this device because of the various inputs and outputs. In my second video, I purchased a DAC Plus standard from HiFiBerry to see if an audio file device would work well for a musician using MIDI devices. It's beautifully manufactured and plugs right into the GPIO header on the Pi. With gold-plated RCA plugs, I thought this for sure would be the best device to use, but after much testing, it sounded pretty terrible in the Sunvox synth software. And now comes yet another test with this little guy right here, the Sobrant USB External Stereo Sound Adapter. I bought this for only $6.99 on Amazon to be used in my DJ setup for headphone queuing, and it didn't work as planned, so I decided to try it out on the Raspberry Pi. It only has one mic input and a standard speaker output. It uses a pretty basic chipset from C Media Electronics. The device ID is 0D8C, vendor ID 0014. All right, let's get all this stuff plugged in. It's a little bit of a tight fit when you have multiple USB devices. Depending on your setup, you might even want to use a small USB extension cable. And I'm just going to plug in a regular old 3.5 millimeter audio cable, which is plugged right into my recording interface. Get our video connected as well, and we'll plug in the power and get this thing booted up. Now the first thing that I like to do when plugging in any new device in Linux, once it gets booted up, is run the D message command, D-M-E-S-G. This is going to show us if the device was actually detected properly. You can see by scrolling up, we will find the details about this device. And here it is right here. Next, we'll configure Jack real quick by running the QJack CTL command. First things first, make sure the proper interface is selected, which is the one with the HW0,0 in parenthesis. It should be the second option. And it's also worth mentioning that my Pi's onboard audio device is not showing because I have it disabled in the boot config.txt file. Feel free to keep all the other settings in here as shown. I'm using 48,000 hertz for my sample rate. 256 frames and a period slash buffer size of 4. Everything else can stay on the default settings. Now one quick thing I wanted to show you regarding MIDI devices is that under the connect menu the MIDI tab will be totally blank and that's for two reasons. One being that the jack server daemon has not been started yet nor has Sunvox. You will see this populate once we actually start Sunbox. I'm only using QJack CTL to configure Jack, not start the Jack server. This is because Sunbox will automatically start a Jack server instance for you based on the settings you just configured. All right, let's go ahead and run the Sunbox Raspberry Pi binary. And first things first, we will configure the audio settings. Simply just make sure that Jack is selected under the driver option. You can keep all the rest of the settings on their default, 
The buffer settings here in Sunvox are totally disregarded when using Jack, so you don't even need to bother configuring those. Alright, now that Sunvox is running, let's open up QJack CTL one more time, and you will now see the MIDI devices available under the MIDI tab. On your end, you will simply need to click on the MIDI Capture 1 device on the left and then select Keyboard 1 under the Sunvox section off to the right and click the Connect button down at the bottom here. On mine, of course, it shows Disconnect since it's already connected. But the moment you connect that thing, it will become instantly usable in Sunvox. And if you have any trouble, check the MIDI settings in Sunvox to make sure your device is selected. You can also see that when I started QJack CTL this time, it detected that the Jack server is already running. Again, that's because Sunvox starts it. All right, let's see how this thing sounds. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I'll go ahead and cycle through the different instrument modules real quick. I must say I'm super happy with the latency. Be sure to carefully check your volume level since this USB device only has a powered output for speakers and headphones. A musician would probably rather have a true unpowered line output, but for today I must say this works fantastically. I especially like how some of these pad modules sound. Overall, I must say this is the easiest and cheapest solution I've found thus far that works with the Pi. I've included a link in the description to this item on Amazon, 
and although it lacks the proper outputs that a professional musician would want to have, I still think it's a perfectly reasonable solution for people on a budget or simply looking for a super tiny USB audio device to cram in a box of some sort. And you know, a lot of folks might wonder why use a Raspberry Pi for Sunvox or any type of synth software where you can just as easily use a tablet or mobile device. And my answer to that is because my goal is to create a completely standalone unit that can be used for gigs, recording, and rehearsals. And eventually it would be great to program the Pi with things like Pure Data or Sonic Pi to invoke custom-made sounds using a MIDI controller. Well, that's about it for today, guys. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll be hooking up a touchscreen to the Pi, setting the right resolution, and automatically starting our synth software so that the only thing you need to do is turn this sucker on and start playing. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments below and if you'd like to see more in the future. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day.